Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have one job in the federal government, and that is to protect the United States of America, our national security, and all Americans, their life, their liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. And since the Biden administration has taken over, there has been a direct result in the number of deaths in this country from fentanyl. I want you to know that in 2020, there were 4.8 thousand pounds of fentanyl seized by CBP. But in 2021, fiscal year 2021, it increased to 11.2 thousand pounds of fentanyl was seized by the CBP. That is a direct result of Biden administration failure policies. Now, here we are in to date, to date, fiscal, fiscal year 2023, they have already seized 12.5 thousand pounds of fentanyl. The Biden administration is failing this country by not protecting our border and securing our border and stopping Chinese fentanyl from being brought into our country illegally by the cartels and people are dying every single day because of it. Fentanyl deaths have doubled, doubled between two years from April 2019 to April 2021, those are the statistics we have, going fentanyl deaths doubled from 32,754 to 64,178. This, this is a complete failure. I want you to know it's affecting every single state in the country. In Georgia, Georgia, fentanyl deaths have gone up by 230%. In rural Northwest Georgia, my district, the 14th district, we are up 350%. Fentanyl does not discriminate on your skin color, your gender, your politics. Fentanyl kills everyone. It kills police officers, first responders, and tragically, fentanyl is now the number one cause of death of young Americans ages 18 to 45. And this is unforgivable. The Biden administration is responsible for this and they have blood on their hands because they refuse to secure our border. Today we, today we have a witness with us, Ms. Kiesling. I just wanna tell you I am so sorry from one mother to another for the death of your two sons that, that died from fentanyl poisoning that should never have happened, should never have happened to you. It should never happen to any family. It happens to families at, at home where I live. It happens to pretty much everyone we know. And I want to ask you, and I, first I want to thank you for being brave to come here and share your grief with our committee. But Ms. Kiesling, would your sons be alive today if, the, if our government would secure our southern border? The year Caleb was born, 2000, there were 20,000 drug-related deaths. And the year they died, it was five times as many. And um, I appreciate you using the term fentanyl poisoning because that's what it was. It wasn't an overdose. They had no idea that they were doing anything that could kill them. And it's because fentanyl got into this country. I, I heard this man over here from the Cato Institute, you know, talk about, well, it's because of demand. What I'm hearing him say is they asked for it. What the hell? Seriously? Are you kidding me? We need to protect our children. They didn't ask for that. This wasn't demand that they wanted the fentanyl. They didn't want fentanyl. They thought they were getting Percocets. Okay, he's absolutely clueless, like total disconnect from what's happening. Um, you know, and to say, oh, let's just give them strips or let's give them rehab. Well, you know what? My kids got the federal, my son Caleb went to federal rehab. It was a flop house. It wasn't real rehab. You're wasting your money where you're sending it. I'm telling you, it's a waste of money because it wasn't real rehab. And the government paid for their drugs under COVID. They encourage them not to stay home. All these young people in our support groups, we all talk about it, how they paid for their drugs with the federal funds under COVID. 
that gave them incentive not to work. Healthy young people. Thank you, Ms. Kiesling. This government has failed you, and it's failing American families. And it's failing, most of all, it's failing our children and our young people. Thank you very the much. The time has expired.